Yeah, man. People deluded, I'm back again. Thank you very much for tuning back in each and every time. Now, as July progresses, the transfer news and rumors are going to start to heat up. So, again, it starts to get a bit entertaining and the appetite starts to get wet. Uh, you know, if there was one player that, based on reports, seems to be moving ever closer to signing for Arsenal Football Club, it'd be Ricardo Calafuri. You know, reports are saying that, you know, while a bid hasn't been accepted and stuff like that, in terms of the intricacies in his intentions to join Arsenal, his willingness to join Arsenal, and likewise, us get a deal over the line and personal terms. It seems like he's moving in that direction, people. So, yeah, people, we've been linked with Rafina. There's some rumours where Smith Rowe is concerned and some other bits and pieces. So if you allow me to share my screen with you guys, give me a second, we'll get into it. Now, first things first, before we actually talk about transfer news, Bakayo Saka, the star boy, the star man, let's stop calling him a boy, he's 22. And, you know, it's crazy that this man's 22 and the high and lows, the games he's played, the talking points, the noises, you know, the triumphs, the, the triumphs, better yet, the tragedies. Is it, I think it brought a, a, a positive tear to everybody's face to not only him having a great performance and scoring a wonderful goal, don't know why Foden's asking for him to square it like you haven't seen Bukayo Saka's trademark Black Iron Robin S cutting in on that left hand foot, left foot, sorry, from the right hand side and, and smashing it in people. And it was lovely to see him have the bollocks to take a penalty. She, you know, it was actually nice for obvious reasons to see the penalty takers, you know, in big up Pickford as well because the keeper did his bit as well. But it was lovely to obviously see. Bukayo Saka, you know, uh, Cole Palmer, Ivan Tony, Trent Alexander-Arnold and anyone I'm missing out. And it was lovely when Saka scored, you know, Ramsdale came in short. Technically, Declan Rice got the assist. I thought Declan Rice doesn't pass the ball forward. A monster of a performance. I'd say that's his best game in the Euros. So yeah, big up Bukayo Saka, man. And, you know, he's done it, you name it, you know, and he's only beginning. He's scored in the Champions League, he scored key goals in the Champs. He's turned it on against France in the semi-finals of a, of a World Cup. And he's done it in the Euros now. There's 180 minutes of way from us winning the Euros and I hope we do it man and if we can't I hope Saliba does now obviously between the French and the Spanish obviously need to get past the Dutch where England's concerned but the Euros is you know it, it feels like it's flown by the Euro this time next week obviously I'm making this on a Sunday it'll be the final and hopefully England's there on the topic of Bakayo Saka and pushing the Bakayo Saka uh, propaganda he has now scored in a knockout stage of both the Euros and a World Cup he's the first Arsenal player to do that and he's only 22 now I'm not suggesting He's got a bigger legacy um, for England than David Beckham, but he's got more goals at, you know, such competitions than David Beckham. My point to say that is not to diss Bex, because Bex is 30. We've got a real star in our hands, man. And every day they move the goalposts. And, uh, and on top of everything, the man's elite mentality, having self-belief in himself. So, yeah, big up Bakayo Saka for having the bollocks to attempt that. And it was a, it was a heartfelt one, I thought, from, um, I don't know if it will show it, but Jaden Sancho put on his Instagram, you did that for me and Rashford. Obviously, we all know what Marcus Rashford, Jaden Sancho and obviously Bukayo Saka went through in the last Euros. So away from that and keeping up the theme indirectly with Euros, Califori, we know he did the business for Bologna at club level, did well in what Italy had, um, you know, and was a bright spark in Italy's campaign during the Euros. Fabrizio Romano who has this great art of saying the same things a million different ways, people. Probably engagement farming, no disrespect, big up Romano, the game's the game. I wish I had you. It is engagement. So yeah, make sure you're smashing the like button, you're commenting and subscribing so we can get the wheels into motion for 70,000. Arsenal pushing to get Ricardo Califori deal done next week as final round of talks has already been scheduled. It'll be nice because as we know, players are going to start returning pre-season. We're going to America. We're doing all those things. Arsenal are confident as Califori wants to move. He's keen on Arsenal's project and agreed on a contract until June 2029 for 4 million euros net per season. And apparently the deal is described as a close people, says Romano. Arsenal are ready to match the 50 million euro asking price. There was interest from Newcastle, Chelsea, and obviously Tottenham Hotshite hasn't come to anything. He's rejected everyone. He's keen on joining Mikel Arteta's squad. There were Juventus talks. It seems like that is... And nobody, that's a non-starter better yet. And nobody at Juventus expects his signature. Romano's also said he wants to join Arsenal. He's crazy for Arsenal. So in a positive way, his head has been turned, people. Apparently, Arsenal and Bologna have actually reached an agreement over Califori. Now, I haven't seen David Ornstein say that 
or, or you know, on Sky Sports. So I think maybe they're jumping the gun, but who knows, people? Apparently, the out outlet understands that barring any expected change of heart, the versatile defender will join Mikel Arteta's gunners once his holidays are over, people. It's been reported Juventus manager Thiago Mota had been pushing for Califori to join him at the Alan Stadium. Um, as they would have been a re reunion after their breakthrough season at Bologna. But the plucky Serie A club, whatever that means, who will play in the Champions League next season, had no intention to sell one of their prize assets to a domestic rival. Arsenal quickly zoomed in, presented the player with a convincing sporting project before agreeing on personal terms with the player. Arsenal expected to pay north of 53 million euros for the signing of California. So 53 million odd euros, so about 40 the upper end of 40 odds so like 47 46 47 48 49 probably be a sell-on percentage and maybe some variables in terms of individual accolades he achieves at the football club and also collectively world cup man said world cups you know championships premier league titles champions leagues etc which i hope we all could all arsenal fans want to see that people but that was jumping the gun quite prematurely again california we've been on to that we want to hear you're a special talent all the outlets are saying that we're set for a new round of talks next week as we're moving ever closer to getting him so yeah big him up people we beat in juventus chelsea primarily apparently chelsea didn't make a bid but who cares on bakayo saka 21 goals and 15 assists for club and country this season please talk nicely on my star boy and that's what i was talking about with the Jaden sancho thing so yeah man cream always rises to the top keeping up the theme with wingers i don't think anybody expects Arsenal to sign Nico Williams but apparently Barca's plan for the summer is to sign Nico Williams first then reinforce the midfield I mean with love Williams it seems like his head has been turned people uh Real Madrid are plotting a transfer of Saliba next summer I mean it's gonna take big money and I do think he'll play for the Real Madrid's and those kind of clubs one day anything can happen but if you ain't got a hundred odd million quid then we can forget about it hopefully with whatever time Saliba has left at Arsenal we can achieve something he's on the contract he's you know I mean his profile's always improving you know him and Saka every minute we talk about these players they're just getting better and better he's obviously growing with importance for for France he's doing his thing during the Euros and as I said earlier if Saka can't bring it home well to be fair well, yeah, you know, if Saka can't bring it home, then Saliba bring it home. If he can't bring it home, David Raya bring it home. And had Timber not have got an injury, he'd probably be in the Dutch squad. You know, our defensive ranks for next season, people. And let me know your thoughts, man. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts on who you actually think is going to start. Because you've got California, you've got Timber, you've got Tommy Ass, you've got Saliba, you've got Gabriel, you've got Benjamin White. I don't know if Zinchenko and Kirill will be here, but, you know, you've got them and options and, and, and expertise that they could probably give to us. We've got some great defensive options. We've got some great attacking options even though I think every Arsenal fan would love a winger and a striker. On the face of it, I'm happy with our midfield options, but I think central midfield, we're doing ourselves a disservice if we do not significantly reinvest. And in that area, you know, Jorginho's not going to be here forever. Neither is Partey. Both of them have little injuries and whatnot. Fabio Vieira and smith Rowe, mainly smith Rowe's linked with moves away. And I just feel if you get that long-term partner for Declan Rice and Odegaard, the trio is completed in that regards, people. Speaking of midfielders, Jao Neves of Benfica has still been linked with us, people. Apparently, it says Manchester City allegedly are the front runners. So I won't waste your time looking at this, but we all know he's got a hundred odd million quid price tag on his head. You don't activate that. I don't think you get the Benfica player. And I think it shadows... Uh, Enzo Fernandez almost forgot his name in that. It's going to take something big. Arsenal are still linked with players. Apparently, we've been linked with Rafina. Apparently, we've actually offered money plus Eddie and Ketty in a deal to sign Rafina, which is why I don't believe it. You know, Freddie and Ketty, you to have Barcelona and Arsenal in your CV. That's great. We have been linked with Rafina before. We tried to prize him away from Leeds like Chelsea did before he opted for Barcelona. Barcelona might need to sell him to make funds. Obviously, he plays in a position that we haven't actually, you know, kind of solved in terms of depth so could it be a case of creative journalism i'm not too sure people if he's not a bad player you wouldn't hear a no from me but i think i overrated him if i'm honest arsenal and city have submitted offers for teenage well southampton and teenage sensation harrison miles in a race for his signature he's expected to leave the you know southampton and open up a new opportunity to sign for another club so yeah if we could get these kind of players why not man it seems that we've been trying to go and prize them kind of talents away from clubs um Man City have joined Liverpool in the race for Anthony Gordon. I mean, I wouldn't be against Gordon. I don't know why that's up there. Arsenal are showing stronger and stronger interest in signing Wolves winger Pedro Neto. And apparently Spurs could make a move, people, if, you know, if things happen. Apparently he's got... You, over the last few days, there's been 40 million, 50 million, and now 60 million 
price tags um, touted where Neto is concerned. We all know the 24-year-old is very versatile, like Rafina, been linked with us before, and I'm sure has a lot of qualities. But I wonder if Wolves will price him out of a move. And of course, when you think of Pedro Neto, unfortunately, you think of injury. So let me know where you're at, where that's concerned, people. We've gone over the Eddie and Ketia stuff. No need to do that again. That's just a pointless Twitter tab from me. Apparently, Fulham will make a new bid for Smith Rowe. The player is happy to stay and fight for his place at Arsenal, but Fulham are sticking to the chase and won't take no for an answer with Arsenal willing to sell at the right price. What is the right price? Get something ridiculous and let's keep it moving in that regard. What is this? Arsenal and Liverpool join the race for 100 euro rated midfield prodigy. So again, we're still linked with Jao Neves as we've kind of referred to people. And it could be a return for David Bentley. You know, he's been at Brentford, he's been at South End. He actually came through Arsenal's system. And I've previously said, reality is we could sign three goalies this summer. You know, David Raya, the move's been made permanently. We can include him, but not. If Ramsdale leaves, then obviously a number two has to come in. And, you know, I don't know if Arsenal have found that number two or maybe they found it, but we haven't began the offensive to get them at the club. But we've been linked with another one, a number of them. And Carl Hines signed a new deal, probably going out on loan. Arthur Okonku has left. There's not really a young academy boy, in my opinion, that's going to... Well, there is on paper, but be that third choice goalkeeper. So it could be a move for Dan Bentley, people, who's apparently at Wolves at this moment in time. Obviously, he's English. He counts on the homegrown quota as well. Um, Arsenal are trying to sign goalkeeper Dan Bentley from Wolves to join them as cover for David Raya. Bentley may fancy the move, even if it's to be third choice. Fair enough, man. Really and truly, you know, it's quite a sweet gig in that regard. So... In terms of transfer news at this moment in time, that's all I've got. In fact, as well, people, I'm actually doing you a lot of disservice because I've actually forgot to share something with you lot. Where is it? Where's Fabrizio Romano? Apologies, people. You know, it, things go wrong. Because Dav uh, David Raya is actually, apparently there's rumours actually he's in line to start for, for Spain. But again, that don't look like a, like a credible journalist, people. But if I share my screen with you lot again, I forgot to actually speak about one player. You know, Thiago Alcantara's retired from international football. There we go. Allegedly, Koza Jubri. Um, he has said, I understand Koza Jubri has decided to sign for Brighton after leaving Arsenal. Here we go. Brighton beat several Premier League and European clubs to the free signing as they offered a clear pathway. Deal done. Koza Jubri will also be integrated into the first team next season. So there you have it. You're going to be integrated into the first team, which is something that's not said at Arsenal. Brighton isn't for the farthest away from London, so you're not that far from your family. And Brighton have a good track record of developing talents, people. So wish him all the best. Hope to see him play at the Emirates. Hope, hope we don't get three points, but hope to see you just develop, if I'm completely honest with you. So big up Koza Juby, man. It's a shame you're leaving for free, but if I was selfish... But that's me as a fan. If I was his advisor, a close fam family member, I would have said you have to leave Arsenal. You've got Nelson on the books, Trossard's there, Smith Rowe's probably more likely to play out wide than you, Gabriel Jesus. There's bare guys there, and we're probably going to bring in a winger. Haven't exactly been, you know, afforded any real significant minutes under Mikel Arteta. It makes sense to leave the football club and do what you've got to do to advance your career. Um, so, yeah, people, that like now we're actually finished. So, yeah, let me know your thoughts on everything we discussed. Most importantly, big up you lot, people. Don't forget to leave a comment, comment, like, subscribe. Most importantly, stay safe, stay blessed. Peace.